Welcome back, everybody, to the Fighting for Freedom podcast. Podcast at a time. What's up, man? Hey, the sound speaks for himself. Drunken Sailor, how are we doing today, bro? Good, how are you? I'm chilling, man. I'm chilling. Hey, uh, a long time in the process to get you on here, but we, we finally make it happen. So uh, thank you for your time. I, I really do I'm appreciate excited. it. I'm excited to be here. Hey, it, I mean, if you guys have social media, right, and you are scrolling on TikTok at 3 o'clock in the morning, and you are military, I'm sure you came across this guy's page. Drunken Sailor. What do you, what do you do exactly? Um, like work wise, yeah. Um, right now I'm a clinic manager for two clinics for a healthcare company out in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona. Now an E4 in the military, E3 in the military, probably like that's great. But why do you drink alcohol all the time? What does your content kind of consist of? So I don't drink alcohol all the time. <laughs> um, I, I do have a family, two kids, so I, no, I'm not an alcoholic. Uh, no, um, no, but no, I. I liked. I started out with a uh, craft beer page on TikTok. Um, I'm a big craft beer drinker, so I was doing craft beer reviews. And like the craft beer community, it's it's very niche, um, mm-hmm. small. And once I figured out, it was I was getting bored. Like craft beers taste the same um, once you get to a certain point. Over like 2,000, I've had probably. And and then I was like, my wife's like, you should do like a military thing. So I did. And the first video did like God, I want to say like 80,000 views i was like i didn't even reach over maybe ten thousand on my craft beer page i was like whoa i might have found something here uh, I and found my so niche. yeah and i just started making video i like to um mix drinks and, and name them things that uh go along with the military and that kind of took off i think my crayon series um, <laughs> yeah. really really took off and it's just been a fun ride and once i go live that's my favorite time because I can answer questions people have and uh, it's been really fun. So before the 80,000 <clears> views and before going live and talking to probably your entire community, you, you had to start somewhere. So who are you? Where are you born? Where'd you grow up? Uh, my name's Josh. Uh, I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. Um, grew up here, lived here my whole life. Um, when I was honestly, I used to talk shit about my friends who joined the military. Um, I was a late bloomer. I was like, why is that guy joining the military? Like, go to school. And then I went to school and was like, fuck this. Um, I was trying to be a firefighter because that's my whole family of is firefighters. And and uh, one day I walked into a recruiter's office at the age of 20. Didn't tell my mom. Um, they talked me into it. And they said, "Can you? when can you leave? I said, well, kicker, I don't want to leave till I'm 21. Uh, I want to celebrate my 21st birthday with my family as a plan. So I left three days after I turned 21 and became a corpsman in the military. Yeah. In the you Navy. needed three days to recover. I believe that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> you, know what's cra- you know what's crazy, Josh? We kind of have like the same story, man. But instead of firefighter, I wanted to be a cop. Like I originally okay. went to school because in order to like make rank and make it through the ranks in the NYPD, yeah. you need a, a, a bachelor's degree. Well, you need 60 credits. So you need your associate's okay. degree. Mm-hmm. So I went to college. I hated it. I was like, this is so dumb. Yeah. But when, when, when that kind of got shifted to the right a little bit, I uh, I was like, you know what? I spent all this money to go to college. I have this degree. I don't know what I'm going to do. How am I going to explain to people that like, you know, I just spent all this money and now I'm like a medical assistant and now I don't want to yeah. do this no more. So I didn't tell my mom either. I walked into the recruiting office and I was like, I want to sign up. And he and they were like, oh, you know what I mean? But I did have some kind of like uh, like stipulations like you did as well. I was like, this is what I want. And if I don't get it, I'm not going to join. Yeah, were- I had a lot. It was uh, when I, they were first offering me contracts. I wanted to go SWIC. That was like my main. They didn't have contracts at the time. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, well, EOD's open. Well, I scored shit on my eyes. I was like, yeah. there's no way. They're like, sorry, you can't have that either. Like, you can be a gunner's mate. I was like, I don't know what that is. And they're explaining it. I was like, no. They're like, how about a corpsman? <laughs> no. They're like, how about a corpsman? I was like, I don't know what a corpsman is. Oh, it's it's a medic in the Navy. I said, 
no, that's the whole reason why I'm joining the Navy is because I want to, I don't want to be, I was trying to be a firefighter. I don't want to do that route anymore. And they were like, well, all your schooling, you, your EMT, all this, how about $6,000 signing bonus? Deal. Sign me up. Hey, you Best go. decision I ever made because I think Gorman is the greatest job in the Navy. So it worked out. I don't think you're wrong, dude. Everybody it, loves Doc. It, and- it's, it's, it's been a blessing. Yeah. Hundred percent. So you, you kind of you went through boot camp. People are like, okay, you're a corpsman. Good on you. Everyone's gonna love you. You're gonna have like a chill job at times. But was your career always chill, or did you uh, get to go no. do some um, fun stuff? I I would say I had it very easy at the beginning. I got a pretty cool duty station in Port Hueneme. Um, for my first duty station, I was in physical therapy, so it was very chill. Then, um, went to field med. Um. And then after Pro Anime, one of my, I put in for orders. I was trying to pick cool duty stations like everyone does. Nothing came up for like three months. And one of my chiefs was like, hey, I'm going to 29 Palms. We're deploying in like six months. Do you want to come with me? I said, you know what? Fuck it. Absolutely. Let's go. I put in for 29 Palms when I checked in, ended up not being in his unit. Uh, Uh They put me in 3-4, which also, I swear to God, everything that's happened to me in the Navy has worked out for the best. Like they put me in three, four, which is, I think the best unit in 29 Palm, and maybe in the Marine Corps. Mm-hmm. They're the most decorated. Um, so I got the best training there, uh, deployed with them to Afghanistan. And yeah, that was probably the hardest time that I had in, uh, just cause obviously the deployment, I was married, um, first time like doing that stuff. But yeah, I would say I've had a lot of difficult times, but the better times definitely outweighed everything for sure. Yeah, when you when you get to work with Marines, it's it, it's definitely a different experience. We did a lot of yes. like uh, like joint exercises. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, the CBs and the Marines go hand in hand, right? Mm-hmm. They, they they say like the Navy and the Marines go hand in hand, and the Air Force and the Army go hand in hand. Yeah, which is probably true, but I think the CBs go more hand in hand because when we do get deployed together or we do like exercises together, for the most part, it's you know we're doing uh we're doing like you know uh construction engineering so like we're building schools or houses or hospitals or whatever and when i did work with the marines in uh in the philippines it was probably like 60 marines and maybe like five cbs because it was their project we just went out there to like help Mm -hmm. within like four hours our like builders took over the entire project you know we were kind of like helping them do everything because you know you, you look around and it's pissing rain and there's like a five foot puddle and they have like the smallest marine in the puddle, like swimming. And I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm like, oh, that, that God. makes sense. <laughs> and then and our I've, chief, yeah. I've partied with both CBs and Marines, and I always make this joke that CBs can out drink Marines, uh, one hundred percent. But CBs are just psycho once they get to that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, like yeah. way crazier than Marines. Marines, everyone talks about them, but I think CBs are crazier when it comes to drinking. Yeah, I mean, we do for have a lot. For sure. There has been a lot of incidents. but uh, yeah, I, I've seen a bunch <laughs> yeah. of incidents, especially in Port Wainimi. Well, I, <clears throat> I, I was first stationed at Port I was in Port Wainimi for five years. What years? Uh, 2018 to 21, 22. Oh, okay. I got out in 20. So, so I was there from uh, 2010 to 2012. Oh, shit. Okay, yeah. No, yeah. I, was, I wasn't around. Damn, 2010. I graduated high school in 2012. I joined in 09. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So that's when they were giving sign-on bonuses. Cause I, I yeah. didn't make, I didn't make the cut for that one. <laughs> well, they're yeah. giving them out again. Yeah, yeah, they are. Yeah, that's true. Well, depending on like you know, if you meet like their criteria. But trust me, they're not giving a UT uh, a sign-on bonus. I, I don't know why though. It's like they want to give people who uh, they spent a lot of money on training for like crane operators. Like that's another entity of the CBs is like an equipment operator, mm-hmm. which is understandable because they can get out and go make 150 200k yeah but an hvac technician can basically do the same exact thing uh, yeah it's all good it's all good i'm that's why i was grateful when i joined you know that was one of my stipulations is i want to do something that when i do and if i do get out of the navy before 20 years i want to be able to like do something with my knowledge it, it, that's what i tell people uh, when they ask when i'm on live like oh what job should i do My first thing is always pick a job that is going to set you up for your future when you get out of the military. That's my number one thing. And thank God I picked Portman because it has helped. Like, that's my whole life now. So it has helped me in every way possible by picking the correct job when you get out. Yeah. So what is Corbin A School like? 
back in the day, it was, um, di- I'm sure it's way different because mm. all of our instructors were, um, Iraq veterans that, uh, were in the thick of it and very strict. Um, they're very to the point, like, if you don't do this, people are going to, people aren't going to come back. And, um, they, they hit it to the point very fast and they're very brutal and honest and, um, not soft. It was not soft. Like I'm sure it is now. Cause I think they're combined with like the air force now. Um, so it's more of like a, I guess a high school now than a training facility for Corman. Um, but yeah, it was, it was long. It was cold. Cause I was there during winter. Um, but it was fun, man. It was really fun. There was, I don't, did you spend a lot of time at great lakes? Mm, no, I was in, in for okay. boot camp and then out the next day. So great lakes was a cool place um, because we had the bowling alley, which that's where everyone went to hang out, drink and party. And then you could go downtown to Chicago. And uh, for me being 21, I was, as soon as I got Libo, I was gone down to Chicago every single weekend partying. So it was a fun place to be because of the location. So Mm -hmm. yeah, it was, it was a blast. Yeah. There's a lot of, there's a lot of eight schools across the street from, from boot camp. Mm Mm-hmm. And everyone says, you know, like, they're like, oh, like, well, where, like, how long are you going to be here for? Like, how long? And then they're like, oh, like, my school's like six months. My school's nine months. Yeah. Like, Harem, what about you? I'm like, dude, I'm fucking leaving tomorrow, bro. I'm going to Texas. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, okay. One of my best friends, he was at ET school. I think his was over a year. Um, So I got to hang out with him. Uh, We met in boot camp, became best friends. So we we went out every single weekend. He was younger than me. um, So I may or may not have uh, helped him participate in some in some fun. But. Uh, yeah, he, he was, so we're still best friends. This is actually his hat. He's a barber down in San Diego and he has his own barbershop, a uh, very, very popular barbershop down there now. So he did well for himself, but yeah, it was, we hung out every weekend together down there. So it was sweet. Do you know the name of that barbershop? Yeah. It's a flagship. There you go. Plug him in yeah. real quick. Yeah. If you're, if you're in the San Diego area, you probably know about his barbershop, but it's flagship barbershop. Joey, Joey will hook you up. I got two friends that work there, so. Joey F. Like, now the hat makes sense. Joey F. Flagship. I got No, his, his last name's Fernandez. So it's, oh. he made these when he was still a barber at the other shop. Um, but he does actually a lot of my artwork. Um, like he, all my logos, he's done these very artistic. Uh, so he does all of his artwork for his shop. It's a, it's a cool old school place. Walk in, pour yourself up a beer, sit, wait, get a hot shave, haircut. It's, it's a cool joint. That that sounds like and one of my yeah. one of my really good buddies just moved well just PCS to San Diego, so I'll definitely I'll definitely tell him. Yeah, I check mean him he out. Se- he seems like uh <clears throat> he's just like this six foot nine really jacked guy, okay. but he seems like the type of guy who like goes to like sports clips because he just doesn't give a shit about anything oh, else yeah. besides yeah, li- lifting really heavy weight. Don't give a shit about the haircut. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, go yeah. get a good haircut. <laughs> yeah, dude, they're like, yeah, I'm just gonna go to the next like. <laughs> Hey, man. The next isn't even cheap anymore, so don't even go there. Like, no, just it's go, like go to a real barbershop. It's like fifteen bucks, and then if you want a hard part, it's like an extra like forty dollars, and you're like, yeah, no. well, what's the point of this, dude? Yeah. I actually have a crazy story about the next, dude. So like, we were on deployment, right? And uh, you know, me and my wife were gonna go to Vegas with like a bunch of my friends, and uh, because it was COVID, right? We couldn't really do anything, so. I was like, fuck it. Let's invite like, you know, like 20, 25 people and we'll all just go to Vegas and we'll just party for the week and we'll have a great time. Well, I didn't want to get a haircut because I was in Japan, right? So I, yeah. I was going to wait till I got back and get like a good barber. The way the time frames lined up, it wasn't possible for me. So I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just going to go to the next because they, they're open right now. And then we'll get on the flight like an hour later. She was like, okay, well, hurry up. So I, I went to the next. And I don't remember this lady's name, but that's the first problem is I went to this lady <laughs> and dude, she, she put the buzzer to my hair. And after the first, like, kind of like swoop up, I was like, I was like, this is going to be terrible. Like I, and too high, too high. I, I can't like, I can't do anything. I can't <clears throat> say anything. Cause like she works on base. She works on my base. So as she kept going, like she could probably tell I was not happy. And I was like, kind of like, you know, like looking and like making sure I, dude, by the time the haircut was done, you know, uh, it wasn't even done. I stopped her like halfway through, and I was like, I, I was like, please, just, just no more. Just cause stop. Make it like, stop. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I was like, honestly, like, no disrespect to you, but this is like the worst haircut 
I've ever gotten and I need to go get it fixed. So I'm going to pay and I'm still going to tip you because, you know, you have to make a living and that's just how this works. Like, I'm not going to like, you know, not give you your $5, your standard $5 tip. But uh, I was like, this is just, I, I don't know. I, I got to go. And I, I left and it was like <laughs> nine o'clock in the morning. And I was like, dude, what am I going to do? Like, I can't go to Vegas like this. Like people are going to think like I lost a bet and this is my punishment. Yeah. So I hit up one of my buddies and I was like, dude, I need a barber now. And he was like, bro, it's fucking 930. Like no barber wakes up at 930. Luckily, he called his barber and his barber was like, tell him to meet me in my barbershop in like 10 minutes. And I got you. Oh, Walked nice. into this barbershop. They had some Spanish music playing. It was like oh, strobe right. you lights. Know it's good. You yeah. know it's good if there you walk like, in your Spanish music. It was like like tall boys like micheladas everywhere i was yep. like okay this is where i need to be i walked in and he was like he's like what's up man i took off my hat he was like sit down <laughs> and uh i sat down and you know uh it worked out for them because then i became an uh, like you know every two week every week and a half customer yeah once you find that barber it's it's game over but because i finally got to go to joey um uh, my last duty station I was stationed at Pendleton, so I finally got to like use him as a, my full time barber. Yeah. So I would drive, I'd make the 30, 45 minute drive every single two weeks, it, honestly, just to go hang out with him. But it just was happened. Like, yeah. I got to get a haircut too, so it was fucking cool. That's that's more of like, like you know, may, maybe like our wives don't understand like why you rather go to like a barber shop. Oh, my wife, my wife gets it for uh, sure. She, yeah. Well, yeah, it's like. She gets it. well, you, you don't have a lot of hair. Why did it take two hours? Well, because I had to wait because we had a yeah. beer because we were talking. Mm -hmm. yep. And then when you get in the chair, it's another 45 minutes. The haircut yeah, only start takes talking about everything. Yeah. The haircut only takes about six minutes, but you know, <laughs> it's just, you know, interrupting each other, talking yep. over. The worst is like when they're asking you questions, but they have like their buzzer, like by your ear and all like, you hear what? is, and, and I'm like, what? And he's like, and I'm like, dude, I can't fucking hear you. He's like, oh yeah, my bad, yeah. my bad, my bad. Yeah, the barbershop is just a, a great place to just be a dude and just like not have to like. Oh yeah, for be sure. worried about what you say because they don't give a shit. No, they don't. They don't. <laughs> not at all. Yeah, my mom actually told me to be a barber like before I went to school, before I joined the navy. You know, like dude, when it's you're a thinking, great job. You're thinking about careers. Like, what should I do? She was like, "Be a barber," and I was like, "My buddy makes great money. He's got a great, great place." It, and I could just see it being a job where you go to every day and like enjoy it. Like, yeah, that's, a, that's what kind of job I see it as. Like, you just walk in with your buds and fucking cut hair. Yeah. And talk to people like, dude, I could do that all day. Well, now you don't have to like work. Like, I mean, now you do have to worry about what you wear every day. You know what I mean? And so does Joey. Like, he has to wake up and like pick his outfit. Me, I'm still active. So I know what I'm wearing tomorrow. You know what I mean? Dude, yes. <laughs> that, that is, um, that is a difficult part for me. I, I wear business casual now. So like. I have a closet full of dress clothes, and I that's my number one issue every morning. Like, what am I going to wear today? I don't yeah. want to wear the same thing all the time. I got yeah. like, and then you're like, fuck, I've worn everything. Now I got to buy more clothes. Yeah. Dude, it's a pain. Instead of just putting on the same thing every day, it's, like, it's different. Do you think someone's going to notice, like, I'm wearing, like, a blue shirt, but it's a different shade of blue? So do you think um, they're going to think I'm, I'm wearing the same I'm more worried about, one? like, because, like, you start getting into the same combos after a while. Like, I, I went a good month and a half with, not wearing the same thing, and then you start wearing the same shit, and you're like, fuck, they're going to remember me. I wore this on my first day. Yeah. They're going to say yeah. something, but it's like, <laughs> come on, man. I can't buy new clothes for every day. Yeah, mm. at, le at least in uniform, it's just like you can't really tell. Yeah. Although no, it's like, although I do have a funny story. I had this one buddy who uh, he, I was stationed with him, and then he changed duty stations before me. Uh, I ain't throwing out names because this is his story, not mine. I'm just going to tell it. <laughs> but uh, he – uh. He was one of those dudes, like, he was a good worker, you know what I mean? Like, if you ask him to do something, he'll do it. He probably had to check it twice uh, before he said he was done. But uh, he ended up changing duty stations. And when he got to his new duty station, his first day there, he got into a car accident. That was his fault. And it was into his CMC. So, oh, yeah, he hit his CMC, you know, and he was like, it, it wasn't like a bad accident, <laughs> knock on wood. Like, everyone was okay. But, uh. You know, they exchange information and he kind of put together like who this guy is because he was like, I'm sorry, like, I don't know where I am. I'm lost. I'm trying to find. It. And he was like, damn, man, like, you're one of my fucking sailors. Shit. So he finally, you know, all said and done, he gets the base, he checks in and he's wearing this 
disgusting uniform. Like this is his uniform that he wore like every single day. Like to not work. only did you hit the CMC, now you look disgusting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like he has brown boots, but they're black at this point. His oh. like his like knee, like his knee area is like all covered in like dirt and like whatever like else he was like digging in the day before. Just don't be that guy. Yeah. Don't be that guy. No. But now he's doing okay though. You know, he finally he got past that that initial. And, and and now he's doing really good. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of uh, – I, I always liked being a second class because you get to mentor. So there was a lot of people that would check in, especially in tournament palms, that were just like shit bags. Like, dude, clean your room. Like, brush your hair. Do do something. Like, You, you want to make that story better for you? He was a second class. Oh, that see that <laughs> – that right there is just un- unacceptable because I feel like – to me, a second class is the most important person in the enlisted ranks. Um, you're that middleman that keeps the younger people from getting in trouble. Um, and yeah, if you can't look good yourself, then you should not be a second class. Like, no. Facts, dude. If anybody has a problem with what I'm about to say, that's on you. <clears throat> the E5s are the backbone of the Navy, man. Absolutely, 100%. And uh, I don't know how many chiefs you have on this channel. Uh, but they are the worst fraternity in the military. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, they don't. They don't even haze the right way. <laughs> I, I make it very public on my. I do have friends who are chiefs, and I love them to death. And I have a very select few of chiefs who I think are great. Um, and every chief in the navy should be like them. But I just think that the navy chief mess is just a fraternity that is not. It's. I mean, why don't the Marines have a, a mess? For gunnies, like it's because they know it's not a good look. Like that's true. I never, I, I never even, I never even thought about that. I like gunnies are some of my favorite people because they, they're. I would almost say gunnies are kind of like an E five in the Navy. Um, they give out great info. Um, they try to mentor the younger people still, even as an E seven. Mm-hmm. And I just don't feel the Navy has that down yet. <laughs> that type of mentorship from a U7 and above. Yeah. And I mean, it's unfortunate. The Chiefs go way back. So, I mean, I yes. guess that's kind of like where do they get it from and like how <clears throat> mm-hmm. the Chiefs are like developed and all that. So, I, I do get it. But you're right. Now that I think about it, no other branch no has No other that. branch has that. Wow. Yeah. And it, it's, it's, I, I guess the worst, at, which I don't even, don't count this as a anything. I was stationed at a reserve center in Salt Lake, Utah. And the chief mess there was they had a whole like conference room with a door that said chief's mess. And there were a bunch of reserve chiefs. Dude, when I tell you they thought they were the greatest thing on earth, yeah. they thought they were the greatest thing. I'm like, dude, you come here once a month yeah. and you think you're going to tell me. Like some of these chiefs had two ribbons. Two. I was like, get the fuck out of here, dude. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's not how this works. No, yeah. you're not gonna <laughs> tell me. Nope. Yeah, yeah. I just, I just wish there was a, a way. I feel like chiefs need more hands on with junior sailors instead of. I feel like they're more of a meeting type person. Um, at least for corpsmen, they're always gone. They, they're not around. Yeah, you're not wrong and about I th- that. I think they need to be around more. Um, yeah, and I think they'll get a little more respect. But there have- are a few, like I've said, that I've had that are, I've learned a lot from. Um, I've, I, I always say, the greatest teachers are your worst leaders. That's, I've always learned that. I always learn best from the worst leaders because I can take everything that they've done wrong and make it better. That's true. Yeah, you, you, people got to learn from their mistakes. I guess you could say, but yeah. if they don't learn, at least you can learn from them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you know, kind of. Two birds, one stone type of thing. Uh, I was going to piggyback. I know you probably haven't heard this in a while. To piggyback off what I said earlier. Dude, I, I say so. it all the time at work. <laughs> I catch myself saying it at work when I'm in my meetings with my staff. I'm like, fuck, why did I just say that? Yeah, dude, they're all, they're all looking at me. And I'm wearing the shirt that I started my first day. Yeah, yeah <laughs> god damn it. I'm a big loser now. No, I'm joking. <laughs> so, you know, the story I kind of told about my buddy, right? Like, that was his first day. And then... It was miserable, but now he's like actually like glowing and, you know, he's being the person he actually is. I, 
I can kind of relate that to while you're in the military, right? Josh was, mm-hmm. you know, a uh, decorated E5 corpsman. Um, but then that, that stops the day you get out. And yeah. Josh had to start over. What was your transition from the, the United States Navy to <laughs> just Josh? So um, I always tell people who are in, take advantage of everything that the military gives you. Um, I took advantage of my uh, tuition assistance while I was in. I got my associate's and my bachelor's degree. Um, so when I was ready to transition, I kind of, my wife, uh, is, she's the same line of work as me. So she was already doing, um, the thing that I kind of knew I would be good at. Um, it's, it's a leadership, it's a management job in, in the medical field. So it was perfect. Um, so I got my degree, uh, my, so just my bachelor's in health science. And when I was getting out, um, my wife was working for a company here and they had a job opening kind of on the other, it was like a different part of the company. It was a surgical area and not like a doctor's office area. So they needed a manager. So I applied, I was doing my interviews while stationed in Camp Pendleton and it just worked out. They hired me. So literally when I got out of the Navy, I came home to Arizona and started a job the next Monday. Um, so it was a very easy transition for me. Um, did it end well? No. Um, I, I was still going to school to get my master's as well at the time. Cause I started my master's when I still had like a year left in the Navy. Um, so I started this company. They told me everything I wanted to hear. Um, you, your leadership sounds great. I think it'd be a great fit to manage our people. Well, about seven months in, they didn't like my leadership style because they were privately owned and it was, uh, the doctors were the owners, like what they say goes. So I was like, well, this kind of feels like the military and you hired me to do one thing. And if I can't lead that way, then I'm not going to stay here. Cause I just don't feel like that's me. Yeah. Um, so I quit there and then I was jobless for about three or four months. And my brother texted me one day and was said, um, Hey, let's, I've always wanted to start a pool company. Let's start a pool company. I said, you know what? Fuck it. I'm at home. Literally, I sleep in. I get up. I play Call of Duty. And I'm a piece of shit. Like, that's... And I just had shoulder surgery. So, I gained... When I got... I got got shoulder surgery right before I got out of the Navy. So, I gained a... I almost... I I remember looking at scale one day. I saw 199. I was like, fuck this. Um... And I was just being a lazy piece of shit. And I was like, let's do it. Let's start a pool company. I've always wanted to own my own pool company. So we did that. We started a pool company and we did well for three or four years. And then I decided it's time for me to go back to being a real boy and uh, went back in the medical field. It's more money, but it worked out. So, yeah, there's definitely more. I, I bet the strain on your body is probably a lot less, too. Oh, my God, dude. Well, Arizona is so hot here. That, that's what I mean. Like one of my yeah. buddies uh, that I was stationed with, he got out and he's from California, but he works in Arizona doing like like electrical lines and all that okay. stuff, like yeah. digging like on the ground. And he's like, dude, it's so fucking hot here. Yeah, I can just you imagine. Wake up. Yeah, it's it's already 100 degrees at 7 a.m. in the <laughs> summer. And then like you're doing pools all day. You you reek of chlorine. Like it can't be good for my lungs either. Not that I do anything that's good for my fucking lungs. But um, so, yeah, it's just it was brutal on my body. I And then when I get home from work, I didn't want to do anything. So I was outside all fucking day. Um, so now I've got a nice cush office job in AC and it's been nice. So it worked out. Definitely. Definitely. The pay helps too. Yeah, the pay is great. Yes. So <laughs> when, when did you exactly start the whole drunken? Well, let, let's before drunken sailor, when did you start your craft beer? Oh, niche? um, so I think I just hit one year on my drunk and cynics. My wife's like, why didn't you post a one year video if you're drunk? And I was like, honestly, I didn't even know it's been a year. Um, so <laughs> yeah, I probably I want to say all the haze maybe started two and a half years ago. Um, yeah, probably two and a half years ago on TikTok. I always got mad because my wife would be on TikTok back in the day when it first started. I'm like, that's so stupid. It's just videos of stupid people doing stupid shit. And then here I am, I'm fucking on TikTok trying to fucking make funny videos dude, and, ha- dude. and having a blast. So it's dude, same man, same dude. Like, <clears throat> I mean, TikTok was always like a thing, right? But I, I didn't care. That's like Twitter. Like Twitter, I don't mm-hmm. have a fucking Twitter. 
I had to make I finally a... just got a Twitter because uh, boo. Uh, well, okay, <laughs> let me tell you why. I'm a I'm a Mets fan. Um, and it's, I know I, I it's, seen the baseball in the back. I was like, oh. it's a miser. I'm a miserable fan. Uh, we have had a miserable life. Yeah. Um, so I got Twitter so I could talk because I get really angry after we lose. So I like Twitter so I could go on there and message everyone that's a part of the mess. Like, fuck you guys. Why the fuck did you do that? Because I feel like Twitter's the platform where they actually see that. And I'm like, yeah, maybe one day they'll see my stupid post complaining about their asses. Yeah, so yeah, yeah they, that's uh, why I like Twitter. You should team up with uh, Frank the Tank from Barcelona oh, Sports. Dude. Because he lets him have it in English. <laughs> Frank is – he almost takes it to a psychotic point though. Like, Well, have you ever seen that mad, guy? but – have you ever like seen his, like, like his cooking videos? Yeah, he yeah, does chew it, on shit. It's strange. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's would strange. you ever go over to that guy's house for dinner? Uh, yeah, probably just to say I did. <laughs> just to film a video with him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll try his spaghetti. Fuck it. <laughs> try the, I'll try that boiled hot dog. I guess that's, <laughs> yeah, that's one way to do it. <laughs> yeah. So not be that bad. <laughs> so you finally caved in and you downloaded TikTok. Uh, you started your, your uh, craft beer. Mm-hmm. And then... Your wife was like, you know what? Maybe you should just do what you're probably destined to do and listen to me for yeah. one time. And yeah. yeah. I, so you got 80,000 views on your first video. That kind of sparked something for you. Mm-hmm. Now, how does your creativity and kind of like your passion continue? I guess you could say. That's the creativity part, it's the hard part because it's hard to think of stuff to do once you've done everything that you can think of. Um, so I try to watch other uh, military members on here and see what they're doing and um, kind of get some ideas, but you don't want to copy them, obviously. Mm-hmm. There's one guy on here that I've really been loving. Uh, he's an army dude, dead, deadlift dad. I don't know if you've ever seen him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he, he has a video and it's of uh, some other video that starts. He goes, play the fucking national anthem. And then he starts talking <laughs> shit about it. And I think that is one of the fucking best dudes on tiktok but i just try to follow everybody get some ideas and try to be original and that's hard to do um once you feel like you've already done everything your brain can think of um like i did i was i did a million views on one of my videos and since that video i I can't get close like I don't know what it is like i'll I'll post them like dude this has got to be good like people are gonna love this and then Oh, a thousand views. I'm like, it, it's hard and you don't know what people are going to like and click on and, and, and scroll to. But I, I'm just having fun doing it. So I don't really care. But yeah, it's nice to see that you're reaching out somewhere. So Dude, you're not alone. I had a video. Uh, it was kind of like a VA, like mm-hmm. funny video. And it hit like, I think it's had like <clears throat> 1.4 million views. Mm-hmm. My last video, 40, 450. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, with you. I yeah, have a thousand yeah. followers. Like, not even my followers want to fucking want. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's no, look, like that's crazy because that you only have a thousand for hitting a million. Because I think I went from 10k to 14 from that million video. Yeah. Um, and and just my my first video I posted, I went from zero to over a thousand in overnight, which was that's what blew my mind because it took me so long to get to a thousand on my craft beer page where I could go live. Cause I think back then you had to get a thousand to actually go live. Yep. Um, so I think it's still like that actually, but it, I'll, yeah, I'll, to use I'll, the video, you can still go live and not use a video, mm-hmm. but yeah, it was, so now I just, I, I sometimes I stay awake at night thinking of something to, to fucking do for a video. Yeah. Uh, it, it's annoying. It's do, stupid. Do I you know, have like that it. section in your phone, like under your notes, that's like just a bunch of dumb ideas. And then one day yeah. you're like, this is, why would I ever think about yeah, this? Yeah, because I don't have a lot of time now during the week to post. Um, so I try to record on Saturdays and Sundays. So I'll put like on the calendar for Saturday or Sunday, like do this video, do that video. Just sort mm-hmm. of remind myself. I wish I could do videos Monday through Sunday, but it, it's just so hard. I don't get home from work till almost six o'clock and then put the baby to bed and then I got to eat dinner and then I'm in bed. So mm, it's, it's tough to stay up. Reality, huh? Yeah. Yeah, dude. It's <laughs> kids. How, uh, ah, oh, shit. What was going to say? Uh, how often do you post videos? Uh, lately, probably I would say two to three times a week. I wish it was more, but that's just what I can. Uh, that's just what I have the time to do. Like I'll probably post one 
Did I just glitch? I'll probably no, post one um, today and tomorrow, and then you probably won't see me again until Thursday or Friday next week. Yeah, Unfortunately, man, it's, it's just how it is. Yeah, I mean, it's like, I get it. You're supposed to post every day. You're supposed yeah. to use, like, their algorithm to, like, meet, like, certain times, mm-hmm. like, the best times. and Yeah, it's, it's tough. You know what? On a Wednesday at 4 o'clock, dude, I forgot. I'm busy. You know, yeah, like, and, I, and I mean, if if you want to pay me to do this, then absolutely, I, I'll be free every day, twenty four seven. Like I see these people that get famous on TikTok and they don't even have a job; they just literally post on TikTok. I would love to do that. Obviously, anyone would. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that hasn't worked out for me yet. So, yeah, um, and Dude, it probably I... won't because I have a drinking page. Even though I don't, I try to keep it a little bit of both because I, I do I there is a serious side to me I promise that I like um I'm still like mentoring people that are either joining or in they I got I get a lot of questions mm-hmm. um so I even thought about changing my name and I'm like no I can't it's I love the name um but I yeah. still feel like I can do different stuff on here so that's what I've been trying to do lately um post different videos that have nothing to do with drinking so <laughs> so you, you said most of your content is drinking for those people who are listening yeah. who don't know, what exactly does your page entail? Um, I, I so I try to like take drinks that are already been made. Like let's say, okay, here's a some type of shooter. Well, I'll just like to change it up a little bit and um make it if if it's a drink of like, oh, you know what? The CVs would like this drink. I'm like, here's one for the CVs and I'll pour it up, or oh, here's for one for the infantrymen. And I just like to try to reach every um job in the military because there's so many of them. Um, mm-hmm. and kind of, it's kind of like my shout out to them. Um, it's just to pour drinks up and, and kind of like a cheers to, to whatever your job is and, and try to make it funny and, and people laugh and, uh, I get a lot of shit. I guess at one point I went to a poker party at my friend's, he's a recruiter here in Arizona. We deployed together. I get there and his buddy would look to me and was like, dude, aren't you that dude from TikTok? I'm like, so I only had like 10 K followers at this point. I'm like, yeah but how do you know like how do you know that like i'm not that big he goes oh dude you're all over the e e4 uh parking space on facebook i'm like what the fuck yeah <laughs> so someone took screenshot me and was talking shit on there but thank god i have great followers and i guess he said yeah but all your followers went in there and were like dogging on that dude who posted i was like okay that's fucking cool i guess hell yeah hell yeah <laughs> now- at least i'm doing something like i don't try to start drama on here there are nah, people nah, that nah, don't nah, like nah, me nah. and uh I, I, if you give me the drama, I'm going to give it back to you 100%. Like, mm-hmm. it's on. But I don't like starting drama. I like to keep my people. Like, if you see me in, on live, I'll let people talk shit to me for a little bit because I'll give it back. But then once I cross that line, I'm kicking them out because it's just not, yeah, it's not like, fun at that point. It's like, are you, are you really that bored? Like, are you really trying, yeah, to, like, yeah, dude, are like, you really trying to give me a hard time right now just for, get like, out of here. trying to live my life? Like, there's, yeah, I, there's 100 people in here. 99 of them are having a great time. Why do you got to be that one asshole? And I just don't want to take away from the people asking me questions on my live. Like, I don't want to sit here yeah. and fight with you when other people are in here legit asking me questions they want to know about the military and and other shit. Like, I'm not mm-hmm. wasting my time on you. I'm just trying to fucking talk shit to me. I, I, give, I give you credit for that. It, it it gets to that point sometimes. Luckily, I don't have that much hate. Well, I don't have really... <clears throat> Maybe a little bit. There's there's some people that have been like, you know, why do you do this? You know, you're this is stupid. Like I, I did this one video with this guy who was, uh, he he was in the army for 20 years. Yeah, he, he got medically retired because he his body had just been through so much shit, and he he tried to fight it, and he was just like, I can't fight it no more. Like I can't like be like, no, nah, like my leg is still good, but let sorry, yeah. your leg's not there. He's like, what do you mean? So he ended up getting out uh, medically retired, and now he works for the VA. And he helps veterans submit VA claims. So I I did a video and someone was like, you know, this is not stolen valor. This is, uh, I don't know, like this is bullshit. Like you're just trying to get people their money. You know what I mean? Kind of like something along those lines. And I was like, what are you talking about? I was like, this guy is like living proof that that's not. You know what I mean? Stolen valor, let's say. Of like that's my number one comment on my lives. Stolen valor. And my comment back to him is "fuck off." That's <laughs> the first thing I say. "Fuck yeah, off, dude." Yeah, dude. It's just like <clears throat> it's like you don't believe me. Don't give a fuck. You yeah, know what I mean? Like, it'd be it'd be different if someone said stolen valor and you were like trying to like argue it and fight it and like yeah, show like, them I'm, like oh I'm look not at even me. gonna argue it. Yeah, like cool, cool, dude. 
Yeah. Great comment. Thanks you for can, commenting. Thanks you for can joining. Move. Yeah, yeah. Call the cops. Uh, I dare you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Lawyer send up. them over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Send them over. Send them over. I'll, I'll yeah. pour them a drink. Yeah, I mean, I, people should use their VA d- disability. Like, it, it's stupid not to take advantage of something that's going to be given to you. The military has taken so much from the people who served. Take something fucking back from them. Yeah. Like, come on. It, even if it's a little bit, take it from them. Because yeah. guess what? There's so many people that don't, and that money's sitting on the table for you, and it's money that can make your life and your family's life better. Why the fuck not? Like, Facts. N- not only like the the monthly compensation is like probably like I guess the biggest thing of like mm-hmm. you know if you were to write down like a list of VA like benefits, oh, absolutely. But, but yes. j- just the medical care, like medical care is like one of the biggest things. And and, and unfortunately, it's a shitty medical care. Um, dealing yeah. with them, like trying to get into appointments. Um. It's awful. I will say that, but it's there for you. Like, so if you don't have any other options, I'm lucky. I have great insurance between me and my wife. Uh, so I literally only use the VA for dental because it's free, and I don't mind going to the VA dentist. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, let's say something happened to my shoulder that I had surgery on. Obviously, I'm going to go to the VA because the military is the one who did this to me. Yeah, they broke um, it. You yeah. fixed it, and you didn't yeah. do the job. So Fix like, it it's there for you as a tool. Um, if you don't have anything else, uh, fucking use it, like use it. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent back, back on the topics of drinking, right. Uh, mm-hmm. as you, as you take a swig of your beer <laughs> or, uh, <clears throat> club soda, club soda. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> let's, they're actually the beach. It, it's my go-to. It, unfortunately, summer's about over. So these are going to be gone soon, but. Are you like a, you're mm. like a summer beer type person? No, I just, I'm on the bush light like, peaches. They're so fucking good. And they just go down. Excuse me. They go down super smooth. So my fridge has been full of them lately. And I can't just sit. And I know I'm a craft beer person, but I only drink them like I can only. I'm good for like one or two a night just because they're so filling. You get so full mm-hmm. fast. So uh, you, I, you, you, like said, you said those go down so easy. They I'm do, sure. Dude. I, it's I'm like sure. Water. I'm sure of all of your videos, there's been one cocktail that has not gone down easy. Oh, but yes. you, you made it look like it does. Can you give me some insight into like... I'm trying to remember one. Um, I get a lot of requests for stupid shit. Um, <laughs> like, oh, do this. Oh. I think someone did the four... I, did I do the four horsemen? I think I did that. That was awful. Uh, obviously, everyone knows the four horsemen. is Jack, Jim, Johnny, and Jose. <laughs> awful. Um, I'm not... I, I'll be honest. I'm not a hard alcohol guy. I don't like it plain. Um... And I don't like drinking pop either. So like mixing the two together, it has to be a small glass for me. Uh, I'm a beer drinker. Like I'll chug beers all day. Um, but if I do have to choose an alcohol, it's I, I love the Corman Ups. That was my first video I ever made was the Corman Up. And it, it's one of my favorite drinks. And I love Jameson and ginger ales. Like I could chew those all day. But if you start mixing whiskey and shit together, oh, I'm out, man. Can you spitball some drinks you have made, like the Corman Up? Like, what was what was in that exactly? Yeah, the Corman Up is a Dr Pepper and Sailor Jerry, it, it, just a doctor and then sailor. Um, so that that's the Corman Up. That's a great drink. It's an easy one. Um, love Jameson Ginger Ale with just a splash of lime. That one's delicious. I've made so many that I thought were gonna be nasty, and then I drank them. Like, oh, this is fucking good. Like the Filipino Mafia one I did um, actually turned out to be very good. Uh, I liked it, but some of them are so sweet that I wouldn't drink more than one. Um, I just because gotcha. I'm using it as a video to make. But yeah, there's been a lot that I've enjoyed, and there's been a lot that I'll never touch again. <laughs> um, but yeah, you just learn as you go. <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I myself, I'm not like a hard liquor person. I couldn't care less. What I like to yeah. do, I like to go sit at a bar. I like to see all the all the taps. Yeah, and, me and too. just just yeah. drink like a nice lager. You know, like yeah. that's, that's like the way to go for, for yeah. Me, you know. Yeah. I'm a, I love going to breweries. Um, that's Facts. One, of my, one of my favorite hobbies. So yeah, I, I love doing that shit. Uh, you just drink them all and then you'll be fucked up because IPAs are just so heavy, but yeah, yeah that's, I, that's I, I just love beer. Like I just love beer. It's yeah. so me, easy to drink. Me and my wife like to, whenever we're at the <clears> ball, <throat> we like to watch other people take shots. That's oh, like kind of that's... that's like kind of like our niche. And then you watch know what the I mean? face they make. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But like, then oh. the, wor- the worst is Josh when they don't make a face. You're like, 
Alcoholic. This guy's they got a problem. This guy's a fucking serial killer. Yeah. They got a problem. <laughs> yeah. Call was the fucking was that, call the cops. Yeah. Was that Jaeger? Was that Jaeger? He didn't even make a face? Oh no. Nope. Yeah, 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 dude. And then like they'll be doing shots of like whatever. And then you know it's bad when they have like a Coors light in front of them. Or like mm. a Miller light. You're like, this guy. This guy drives a fucking nineteen ninety eight Nissan Ultima. He's yeah. a fucking tell it marketer. And he's doing shots of Jaeger at the bar. This guy's ready to yeah, do I, some damage. I do Jaeger once a year. Uh, it's my grandma's birthday because she was a big Jaeger fan. So that's uh, my little tribute to her. I do Jaeger once a year, and that is it. I, I, Jaeger is so disgusting. It, uh, so it tastes like it black licorice. It, yeah, and it, it's just not good. Yeah, Even no. with Red Bull. Um, so I saw a guy who was doing a series of I'm going to make drinks with this until I like it. And then he takes different alcohol. I'm like, dude, I should fucking do that because I could take Jaeger and probably never find a mixture that I'll like with it. But I, my new thing is I want to do a shotgun with some type of, not even, I wouldn't say celebrity, but like uh, someone on TikTok that's pretty big. And I, cause I want it to kick off. So where I'm just doing shotguns with like other big people on TikTok, I think it'd be really funny just to see like, random people drinking with me on a video that'll be fun that'll be yeah fun. it would be cool it'd be it's tough to do obviously because no one cares that, about my fifteen thousand followers but <laughs> Wait, uh, hey that's fucking day, 14, you know, it only 000, takes one yeah it's fourteen thousand more than me well you i thought it so too one. i was like damn this video is blowing up but you know i mean i I've, i obviously gained a lot of followers and a lot of views from it but or likes whatever the fuck it is i don't know but it's all right in yeah, due time tiktok's weird on how it the algorithm it's all weird like so strange like i finally talked to my buddy joey into starting because he has an instagram page for his barbershop and it, it does well uh, i was like dude you need to make a tiktok because you'll fucking blow up like people love barber videos it's, it's so satisfying yeah so he made one um not for his barbershop for him um and this is actually the logo on his uh tiktok and it's it's doing okay, like for just starting out, like three four hundred views a video. But I'm like, man, dude, how is it not taking off? Because like he's so good at editing and 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 doing all this shit for him. Like I thought for sure he would just take off with a with one video of doing that yeah. shit. But TikTok's weird, man. Yeah, well, it's like very weird. It, it it goes in like phases. Like when it first mm -hmm. started, it was like short clips. Now it's like now it's over now, a minute. Now, yeah, now you always see it. It's like, oh, if you want, if you make a, vi a, a video over a minute, we'll give you, you know what I mean? Like it'll be so much better. And I'm like, yeah, you'll see me act stupid because I'll do a video and I'll be looking at the time. It's like 55 of them. I'm just like for five seconds, like trying to fucking <laughs> yeah. okay, one minute. All right, we're yeah. done. And and you don't get. I'm not here for the money, but you don't get paid unless it's over a minute. Once you hit 10,000 followers, so if I'm gonna post a video. I might as well try to get something from it. Yeah. Um, so it's like, I have to do a minute at least. Yeah. Or else I'm not going to get anything. What if this video <laughs> takes off and hits a million? It's 59 seconds. I don't see a dime of it. Like, yeah. Fuck. You're like, damn. Yeah. Missed out on that opportunity. Yeah. It, it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy how TikTok changed so much. It has. But it's like taken over. So it's like, if you don't join the train, then, you know what I mean? It is what it is. My yeah, wife kind of introduced, like I was saying before. Showing me all these dumb videos of like I don't know Halloween shit and Christmas shit, yeah. and I was like, "Oh God, here we go." Yeah, my wife is. Uh, you know how like your wives watch stupid fucking celebrity drama on TV, and they think they're like best friends with the people on the show. Well, now it's the same way with TikTok. They're like, "Oh, I love this girl," and one of them lives here, and she's super annoying, and my wife loves her. And I'm like, "Well, fuck." Be friends with her then. Let me do a fucking collab and get get me big. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. Just you I want a shotgun of beer? Yeah, I don't want to work no more. I want to do TikTok <laughs> video. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Have you uh have you ever reached out to anybody famous that wants to uh that you want to do a shotgun with? Yeah, I've I've, I've reached out to Steve. will do it. I posted that video trying to get Sugar Sean because uh he lives here. So I was like, yeah, he did. Yeah, that's true. I was like, oh, let's just try it. But yeah, there's here and there. I'll, I'll try to tag tag one or two of them or just shoot one a message knowing they won't message me back but sooner or later we'll hopefully get one and it'll be fun you should reach out to uh vaughn uh mandatory fun day oh yeah yeah i know who he is uh yeah i i don't i'm not like friends with him i'm more friends with uh pogue actual and um 
Red Bars. I talked to uh, Gunny. What's his fucking name? Modelo Time. Mm-hmm. Or no, what's his fucking name on here? It's he's the Gunny with the mustache. He always drinks Modelos. I went live with him a few times. He's fucking fun. But yeah, it's usually like Marines that I'm uh, mostly friends with on here because it don't makes know sense. Why it just works out that way. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't know who decided. Like at a table one day during a meeting, was like, you know what, the Air Force and the Army are gonna work together, and then we'll just we'll just let the Navy deal with the Marines. <laughs> I'm glad they did. Glad yeah, they me, did, me too. I don't want to work with the Air Force or Army. No, like if I'm gonna work with a group of people that I'm gonna have to like train to build this building in like 45 minutes, I want it to be Marines, man, because they're just the funnest group yeah, of people. Yeah, you'll ever. get 50 lance corporals that'll have it done in 30 minutes. Yeah, <laughs> it it may. It may look like this, but it's it's up. It'll get it's, done, chief. Chief, it's up. It's all you asked for. Yeah. You just asked for yep. a building. You didn't, you didn't say, say how you what, wanted it. You didn't say what angle. <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> dude. I remember this one time we were on the project site and we had the marines like mixing water. So that's like the worst job ever because you're covered in oh, dust yeah, that's from concrete. And dude, one we had this one guy, and there was this one guy like kind of like sitting down like on a bag of concrete, and all these marines were like grouped behind him. I said, what the fuck is going on? So we we go over there and we look. They have this one Marine down. And all the other Marines are like di- like putting their fingers like in the bag of mortar, like in all the dust. And yeah. they're like painting his face to make him look like a cat. You know <laughs> And he's just sitting there like this. Dude, like, that's some shit they do, it. man. Yeah. That but is like, some shit. But like their gunny sees it and the gunny's just like. And it, and then like our chief would see it and be like, rawr, rawr, rawr. and I'm like, dude, he's having a good time. Leave him alone, you know. He ain't fucking. See, and the Marines are and they're so. They're, I love the Marines because they literally follow the rank structure 100. percent You could have an E2 tell an E1 something, and they were like, "Yes, sir." Like that's fucking how it goes. So when I got there, um, to Tornado Palms, like once you get a doc, they don't care what your fucking rank is. They're like, "Yes, doc. No, yes, yeah. doc." Like, like, yeah. Dude, I'm like, dude. It's, chill well once you're there for so long you know like the people the mar- younger marines that need some guidance um so then you kind of are like hey fucking lance corporal go get me that over there yes doc and you're like yeah. fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah like dude this is the life and and i'm and I, I don't do it to like obviously be like tell someone what to do but those are the, like usually those are the marines that need more uh guidance and training and usually the ones that fuck up a lot so that's how the corporals and sergeants kind of get them back on pace. And, and it's cool. Cause once you, once they make friends with you with doc, dude, you're like their number one confidant. They will come to you for fucking any problem they have. And it's kind of cool. Cause now you're the middleman between Lance corporal and Sergeant who fucking hates that guy. And you're like, dude, lay off of him. I got him. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Take a break. You're, you're, you're like the mediator in every yeah. situation. Yeah. Cause one, they, they understand that, like, yeah, you're an E5 because, like, they know what this little symbol means, mm-hmm. what, it, what this little symbol, ha- how it's changed. But then you're in the Navy, so it's like, ah, he's in the Navy, so he doesn't really, like, you know, he doesn't, like, kind of deal with us, but he yeah. is Doc at the same time, you know what I mean? Yeah, it, it's a cool it's a cool place to be, for sure. I, I, I can just imagine uh, the stories that you have been like, how did the RC car end up up your ass? Like, how did, <laughs> what were you doing? That <laughs> so many. There's a lot of stories that I that are the craziest stories to me, but I can't really say them. Nah, um, we yeah, we're gonna we're like, gonna keep keep that medical record to themselves. Yeah, but it's uh like you hear them, you're like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. there's no way that just happened. And you're like, god damn, dude, there are there are fucking things that happen. They must get really fucking bored in barracks, let me tell you, because <laughs> yeah. the things that happen in there, I'm just like, good God. I'm I will glad ask, I'm not in the barracks. I will ask you one question. Simple yes or no will suffice. You don't have to get into it. Yeah. Uh, when I was deployed with uh, the Marine doc, he was a Navy doc, right? But he was attached to Marines, like a FMF corpsman. Uh, and I said, you know, like, I don't, it's kind of the same question I just asked you. I was like, I, I don't, I don't want to know specifics, but like, what would you say about the Marines in like a, like a medical you know, like, why were you doing this type of ordeal? He goes, all I'm going to say is Marines really like knives. Is that true? A- absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> they play games with knives that are just, I'm sitting there watching like, 
I better go get my med bag. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, but, yeah. Something's going to happen. It's like that one game where, like, you stand, like, a certain distance apart, and you, like, underhand the knife, and it, like, yeah. lands right by your Dude, feet. they used to play the one where you spash oh, as yeah. you can to it, and like, oh, I have all my fingers. Here we yeah. go. <laughs> Yeah, we, we, all the time they play it all the time. I'm like, can we stop <laughs> doing this? Like, yeah. no, yeah. I got better yeah. things to do. Yeah, you're, <laughs> you're not wearing gloves, and that guy over there is not wearing steel toe boots. So, how do you think this is gonna end <laughs> for you? You know what I mean? Oh my god, dude, they're crazy. <laughs> so, long story short, to sum that up, anybody listening, if you want to make a ton of fucking money. Just open up a knife reselling store in front of any Marine Corps base. Yes, yes. You'll be filthy rich. <laughs> yeah, uh, a knife shop, a barber shop, a and, tattoo shop, massage yeah. parlor. Um, yeah, open it up and you'll yeah. be rich. Yeah, and, and, a, and a dry cleaners. And dry cleaners, <laughs> yes. Maybe we don't use those as much, but yeah, but the Marines use them weekly, I feel like. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like, wow. They they come up to you with all these holes in their uniform. You're like, dude, I don't even want to know what's behind the hole. Like, what yeah. you do? Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. Wild. Do, do you They're have any? Wild. So you were in the military a, a while, right? And mm-hmm. you kind of did a lot of things. You've seen a lot of things. From your experience, do you have any lessons learned that if you could do differently, you would? Different. I mean, you took advantage of school, so probably education wouldn't be one of them. What about... No, definitely took advantage of education. What about, uh, like, financial or... Oh, yes, absolutely. Financially, um, I have a car problem where I like to... I get very bored of having the same vehicle um, for more than, like, two years. Um, so when I was... I started with one car when I joined, traded it in, tra- and then you just... I wish I would have saved my money because there's so much money to be made in the military if you do it correctly. And as a young, uh, brand new 21 year old, um, yeah, I was partying. Like I just, every time I was off, I wanted to go out cause you're in a new place. Like I'm in California. Um, so I want to go check out the bars and spend my money. And I want to, I've never, I lived by myself before I joined, but not really so like i didn't get like the whole I, i'm living by myself now so i could buy myself cool shit that i don't need um so yeah if i i wish i would have saved um I, I could have saved a lot of money a lot if you really look back at how much we make and how much extra you have i was lucky at port Wanyimi. um i got to move out as a e4 mm. Actually, technically, in E3, I got to be on an apartment on Port Wainimi. And then once I picked up E4, I got to move out in town. And I rented a room for 500 bucks. So there was a lot of extra money there from BAH that I should have saved and I didn't. And there's just so much money that you have left over if you do it correctly. And if you spend it, then I wish I would have saved it. Yeah, I would say Port Wainimi and Gulfport, right? <clears throat> Just kind of like CB talking, right? Because I don't really know mm-hmm. like the rest of the Navy and like how they operate or like barrack situations or living. I don't know. But it kind of goes across the board. The best thing I did was, you know, I, I knew I was going to be in this apartment for a year, right? Because mm-hmm. the employment rotation was a year. You were six months home for a year and then it was like, you know, clockwork. So I knew I was like, well, I don't need like a nice fancy place. And I didn't want to you know, get the place by myself because that's just more money and have to pay. So I just got yeah. some roommates and, you know, we just shared an apartment for a year. And then I was like, all right, time to leave. And when we did like our walkthrough with like the landlord, I guess you could say, they were like, did you even fucking live here? And I was yeah. like, yeah, but like, we're never home. Like we have training, mm-hmm. we have work, we have duty, you know, like I'm in California, I'm exploring, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, there's better. Well, see, our, my last apartment was a little weird because, uh, so I got um, married in Twin and Palm, or Port Wainimi, and I got divorced when I was in Twin and Palm, or no, Salt Lake City. Um, so after I got divorced in Salt Lake, I was single, and then I met now my wife there. Um, and we weren't married yet, so I went to Pendleton for my last duty station. So I had an apartment by myself, a one bedroom, and then a buddy that was in med battalion who was like, hey, me and my wife are getting a divorce. Do you want to get an apartment together so we can save money? I was like, fuck yeah. So we moved in the same exact apartment complex, like a building over to a two bedroom. And then I found out he plays guitar. And then I was like, okay, well, I play the bass. And then we started the band. So our apartment, our apartment became a studio 
for this band we just created <laughs> and we were so fucking loud. We had a full drum set, a bass, a guitar, uh, speakers, uh, mics, everything. It was like a full fucking thing. And we were to the point where we've made friends in the apartment. So like every Friday, Saturday night, we're practicing our songs as we had like shows. Um, and they would all come up to our apartment and sit in the room and watch and drink. And I was like, dude, we get so many complaints. I'm like, how the fuck did we not owe any money when we left that place? Yeah. <laughs> like, I bet that guy was so happy when you were like, hey, this is oh, how we yeah. noticed to vacate. I don't like, know how we didn't owe anything. or I, I don't even think the cops ever got called, to be honest with you. I don't know how that never happened because we were so fucking loud. You, you, I mean, you probably went after hours, but maybe just during that time frame of like when you're yeah. allowed to like. I mean, it a was a, it was a bunch of younger people that were in the military also that lived in that apartment comp. So I mean, maybe that's why uh, they didn't really care. And most of them would just come up to our apartment and drink and watch us play. So it kind of worked out. So, some of the best times you've ever had in your life. Yeah, yeah, being in a band in in California was really fun. Um, playing at all the breweries around Pendleton was was it was pretty cool. Mm. Yeah, it was fun. That's crazy, man. That sounds that sounds like you had a, it sounds like you had a really good career, man. I'm not gonna lie, I had a great career. It was fun. Um, or the things I do different, yeah, little little things here and there. But overall, it was it was a blast, and I learned so much. Um, I learned a lot that's helped me now in my career now. So it's, it's worked out great. I know we kind of touched on it a little bit throughout the entire podcast, but words of advice or words of uh, information to give to someone who's thinking about joining the military tomorrow what would you tell that guy number one pick a job that's going to help you when you get out number one um and and pick the right branch because i know we all i'm i'm i talk so much shit about the army and air force but there are jobs in the army and air force that uh and i think there's branches for types of people um like if you're someone who is lived at home your whole life and are kind of quiet and um but really smart i think the air force is great for you like i think you'll you'll do well in there um depending on what job you want to do um if you're a party animal i don't think you should join the marine corps i think it'll make it worse yeah. maybe maybe the army or or find a job that um will keep you grounded like uh on a ship i mean until you hit port i guess um, but there's just certain things that I think people should really look into when joining the military and not just do it because um, they want to join the military. Um, there's just so much information that's not given unless you go out and find it yourself. Mm -hmm. And I get that. to me, any any medical job in the military is a great job um, because obviously it'll help you when you get it. Any, um, I know we hate our fucking MPs and MAs. Um, but if you want to be a cop when you get out, that's a great job to have in the military. My brother's an MA right now in the Navy. Um, if you already have a degree, go be a fucking officer. Like, don't mm -hmm. don't go enlisted. It's stupid. It's mm -hmm. you're leaving money on the table. And if you want to go be enlisted to go fight some war, guess what? We're not in one. So don't waste your fucking time going infantry. Like that's just dumb right now. And so many people, these young kids, oh, I want to go. My brother, for example. Um, he's very smart. He he graduated from the Naval Academy. Um, he chose to be a Marine Corps officer, infantry officer. Um, so he's he's a he's a Marine Corps infantry officer. He always wants to say, "Oh, I want to be like you and fight in a war, dude." There is no war. Like, don't worry about that. Don't worry about the glory. Because guess what? When when you come home, that shit sucks. Like, it's not. Well, it's no one cares that you just fought a war. Nobody. You yes, you'll get the thank you for your service, but guess what? It's not it's not what it's made to be, and and no one cares that I was in Afghanistan. Uh, it, that doesn't matter, dude. Find a job that fits you and and helps you and your family when you get out. Number mm -hmm. one, that's like my biggest biggest thing when someone says they're joining. No, uh, well said, I, Josh. I, I I appreciate that. Yeah, that, when dope, you're getting man. out, if you know you're getting out, fucking go to school, man. Go to fucking school. Yeah, go to school, and then before you get out, utilize SkillBridge. Yeah, I got three degrees that I didn't pay one for. Actually, they paid me for them. Yeah, you did <laughs> get paid for them. And then like even I after you get paid, out, you, you get you get a nice BH check yeah, just to go to I school. I got paid to get my fucking master's degree. Like, how, how many people can say that? My wife's still paying for her fucking master's. Like, <laughs> Yeah, well, that's all right. It is what it is. You know, everyone, 
everyone does something different with their life. And Absolutely. people who join the military don't take advantage of all the perks that come yeah. with it. Besides mm-hmm. the free meal on Veterans Day and the 15% discount I don't even do that. That's the one thing yeah. I don't do. I should probably start taking more advantage of that. But I just hate leaving that. I'm a homebody. I don't fucking yeah, leave that. Yeah, they don't, yeah, DoorDash doesn't honor it. So it's yeah. kind of like, eh, whatever. Can I just pay the delivery fee? Like, <laughs> yeah. What's going on? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, shit. Very Josh, nice. do you have any questions for me? No, man. I, I love what you do. Um, it's It's been a blast. Man. I, I'm glad. You're my first podcast. Um, so it's been awesome. I got Sorry. one. I know. I don't know if you follow Ramos. He's a Marine uh, realtor in San Diego. He's asked me to go, but I have to go there. It's in California, so that's like a whole thing that I have to plan. But, dude, this has been a blast. Um, I hope we can do more of these and other people that want to do them. I'm, I hope your fucking page grows more because you deserve it. Like, Dude, me too, bro. That's I don't why know I'm, how... trying to play, that's why I'm trying to play Call of Duty now. I mean, it is growing a lot with Call of Duty. But, like, that's just something that, like, I've done my whole life. Like, when I was in middle school and high school, I would get out of school. We'd go play handball and, you know, do some fuckboy shit. And then when the streetlights came on, we would all go home and play Call of Duty. Yeah, so, it, it's a I, – I guess I'm – I don't – I play video games, but not enough to, like, say I'm good. But, um <laughs> – I try to keep my page what I am, whether it's either going to grow or it's not. Um, yeah. And hopefully it does, but I just want, I just want to send messages to people that actually, enjoy, when they join me, I want them to enjoy my page. So when I get comments from people like, dude, I love what you're doing. Keep it going. That's the shit that keeps me keep posting. So it's like every day. All right, good. If you like my shit, then that's all I care about. Like, yeah, if I can make you fucking laugh out of your shitty day when some chiefs up your ass, Fuck yeah. And you know what? Tell tell your fucking chief what I said about the chief's mess. Tell him Drunken Sailor said it. <laughs> it's like, a, it's, like that, a it's like that one scene in School of Rock. It's like, I've touched your kids and they've touched me. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, exactly. You know? There's so many times I come across pages. There's this one chief on here I can't fucking stand. Um, and I want to comment so bad. Um, and I, I refrain because I know as soon as I do, it's going to be a shit storm of people fucking commenting. Even though yep. I've always wanted to kind of get into one of those little tiffs, um, I'm just trying not to. Cause... Yeah, just pull your mustache over your under lip yeah, and call it a day. Me. Yeah, just it's hold that back to where it was. Hold that thing down. Um, hopefully in a couple months, it'll be where it, the glory it once was. Um, yeah, I just shaved my shave wife mine. hates it. Yeah, I know, exactly. I saw that. It was our uh, one year anniversary on the third, so a couple of days ago, and uh, she was well, like, mine's Can you in "Please, 10 days. Sh- well, maybe you might shave it and start all no, over." No, absolutely again. not. I told her this time, I'm not. Uh, I get too many comments. Where's the mustache? Shouldn't shave the mustache. Well, now it's a part of me, so it's coming back and staying because it's yeah, it's the drunken sailor. The, the next time, if you do rebrand or revamp, you know your your, like your drunken sailor flag behind you. you I gotta, am. It, it's coming. I need a you, new one. You got to throw that big fat stash on there. Well, I have my koozies are kind of hard to tell, yeah. but my actual logo has the yeah, I see, the, I see. the stash on it. Um, but yeah, I do want to do some. This is a <clears throat> an artwork from um, a guy on Instagram called the Hold Fast Collective, which I have so much of his shit in my office. Uh, he's so good at what he does. Um, so I asked him if I could put it on the flag, and it's been awesome. I've promoted it, dude. I should probably get a cut if you're listening. Uh, I've promoted it so fucking much. Um, but yeah, I do want to change it up to something more me. Um, yeah, that that'll be that, that'll page, be sick. So. You should yeah. uh you, you should go to the VA and have them do like a full X ray of your entire body and then you can use that to be on your flag. Yeah, that would be funny. My little <laughs> fucking dick sitting there and yeah. all the yeah, all the screws like, in my shoulder. It just looks like a yeah. Oh god, that would be, be. Oh, dude, you're missing an inch of your yeah. collarbone. Yeah, that's. Yeah, that's me. Oh, there's a, oh, that's a female sailor. No, yeah, that's yeah, a, weird. <laughs> What's that little thing down there? What's that nub? Was she pregnant? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't mind that. <laughs> That's <clears throat> funny, man. Hey, Josh. That would be funny. Josh, this has been a great episode, man. Again, uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I appreciate you coming out, man. I appreciate you kind of giving, you know, uh, Josh from the beginning to where Josh is now. Uh, I, I wish nothing but the best, man. Same to you, man, for sure. Thanks for having me. I, I hope this blows up for both of us. That'd be fucking cool. Yeah, me too, bro. I hope we can have a beer one day in person because absolutely. we're so we're so rich. We just don't where know what to right do. Now? Uh, Norfolk. 
okay. Oh God, awful. I've been there once. It's a terrible yeah, but I, place. But, but I'm a CB, so it's different for me. You know okay. what I mean? Well, I spent a week there for training, and I thought it was the worst place ever. So I it, I'm, could only it imagine. It is. It is. But uh, we have gu- we don't have gun laws, so that's good. oh, neither do I. Yeah, yeah. me neither. Well, I'm yeah, in you're Arizona. Arizona. It's, it's the Wild yeah. West here. You, you think Sugar really Sean O'Malley would live in Arizona if it wasn't the way? No, it was. yeah, yeah. It's just gonna Sugar Sean. I need to do a drink with you, so yeah, he's probably got like a big fight coming up or some shit. He does, I actually speaking up before I let you go. I know I just I just kind of like ended it, but I'm gonna pick, I'm gonna say one no, more thing good. before I go, <laughs> dude. I'm looking at my desktop right now, and I have these three videos of me playing Call of Duty, and it was actually me and my buddy that I was stationed with at the time playing Call of Duty with Sugar Sean O'Malley. That's fucking. Cool, I man. swear, dude. If you ever play uh, with him again, tell him Drunken Sailor wants to chug a beer with him. Uh, I got it. you, bro. I got you, Josh, Sugar Sean, and everyone listen. Thank you, guys. We'll catch you next time on the pod. Hey, have a good one, guys. Views presented are those of the speaker and the guest do not necessarily represent the views of the Department of Defense or its components. Neither the Department of Defense or its components bears any responsibility for the accuracy, legality, or content of the views discussed on this podcast. Now, without further ado... Let's get into this.